When I first read Hamlet, I had no idea what it was saying. The first time I did it, I didn't understand a word what they were saying. When I started reading Shakespeare, I didn't understand anything. It was really difficult. It was really hard to understand the big sentences and the big words. I wasn't really sure what Hamlet was, because I've never heard of William Shakespeare. First, when I read Hamlet, I, I didn't know what it, what it meant, but Rafe kept kept uh, in explaining us like five times, like every time, and now I got it. For those of you here for the first time, let me tell you what this is about, because a lot of people who come here have never seen a Hogwarts Shakespearean play. This is about 50 kids who work unbelievably hard and defy the culture both of their neighborhood and of their country. They immerse themselves in a culture where people are good to each other, where hard work matters and character matters even more. It has been an honor to be your teacher for this play. So for the last time, put your hands together. Let's do the best show you've ever done. Every song, the best you can sing it. Every line, the best you can say it. One, two, three. Let's go. Wherein thou catch the conscience of the king. Hobart Elementary School is a regular public school right in the center of Los Angeles. It has close to 2,300 children, which makes it one of the larger elementary schools in the United States. We have what's known as a year round school, so we begin in July and end in April. This is a regular fifth grade class. We do all subjects all day. Shakespeare is actually a very small part of our day that we do after school. Most of the kids here are 10 years old, and I love teaching this age level because an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I like to get kids on the right track early. You want to be in this play, forget about television. Forget about all the crap you do on video games. It's over. This is about hard work, even when you go home. If you can't live without TV, this isn't your class. Now, how many of you are ready to kill your television? Good. Kill it. It's the worst thing in your house. I'm getting in early because I need to be very well prepared. I'm asking my students to put in a long day and work very hard. And if I don't set an example, I can't ask them to do that. When I began teaching there over 20 years ago, it was a poor neighborhood. These days, it's a poor neighborhood, and it's also a rough neighborhood. And it makes it very difficult for the children going to school there. The children who go to Hobart Elementary School are almost all Latino or Asian. For example, in my class this year, none of the children spoke English as their first language, and all of them speak their home language at home. I was raised in a home where I was told to try and make a difference. And for me, with my particular skills and passions, I thought the classroom was the best place to do that. These are neighborhood children. Some of them have extraordinary ability, and some of them are just your average regular, everyday, run-of-the-mill kid. Everybody take the amount of money you will have in the bank when you grow up to become a teacher. Zero! That's right. Good. Add to that the number of justices that sit on the United States Supreme Court. Nine. Ah, that, 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 that. <laughs> Not supposed to tell everybody. <laughs> Add to that the number of weeks in a fortnight. Add to that the number of feet in a yard. Cut that number in half. Cut that number in half. Subtract one and a half and show me an answer. Ooh, I see some people got it. Now, are you giving me a two or is that a peace sign? Two is right. Two is the right answer. I'll give you 15 points 
and you better discuss it, but you lose 30. Oh. I need all six states that touch Idaho. Talk it over. Fifteen for thirty. We got a solution right here. Andrew says he's sure. Here we go. Montana. Montana is one. Um, he's talking now. His turn. Wyoming. That's two. Washington. That's three. Oregon. That's four. Utah. That's five. Nevada. All six. Well done. <laughs> Well done, Andy. Fantastic. I love Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare because my father read it to me as my bedtime story when I was a little boy. It's what I was raised on. So while, of course, I do all the school standards, we do Shakespeare here because I personally love him. And my passion is passed on to the students. I've used Shakespeare as kind of a microcosm to teach the children all the things that I want them to learn because it's not really about Shakespeare. These kids are not Shakespearean actors. They're not gonna be Shakespearean actors. By learning Shakespeare, these children are learning enormous amounts of vocabulary, enormous amounts of discipline, teamwork, the respect for one another, so that when one child is on stage, the others are learning, maybe it's my time to be quiet and let him have his moment. And I will tell you that my students who go through the Shakespeare program come back to me five years later, 10 years later, and tell me it's what they learned on this stage that helped them get to Princeton or to Harvard or to UCLA or USC. You know what Hamlet's really about in one word? But in one word that starts with a D, it's the big issue. It's about death. I mean, think about it. What's the first thing that happens in the play, the very first thing that happens? The king is, it starts with a death. I mean, the whole play is set in motion with the death of the king, right? So many people die in this play that at the end of the play, there are bodies all over the stage, okay? Towards the end of the play, in the great scene, in the graveyard, right? Right, you know, they got the scene in the graveyard and they're, they're throwing skulls out of the graveyard. No, I mean, you know, to the point where Hamlet actually picks up the skull and goes, let me think about the meaning of this. I think you gotta say this play's about death, right? And let's face it, it's something we all think about. Let's see if now we all hear the speech a little bit differently than we once heard it before. Alan, you're up. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die to sleep no more, and by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Now I use sports just like you use everything else here to drive home the message of what I'm trying to teach the children, which is to be nice and work hard. Baseball, for me, is the best game ever invented. It's the fairest game, by far. The defense holds the ball. Every kid gets a chance. If you're winning, you still have to have the other team get up. You've got to give them their shot to catch up. You have to get them out. You can't play keep away. And it's a wonderful game. It's, it's our game, as Walt Whitman called it. And I want these kids to be Americans. And a lot of them are new to this country or have not been in this country that long. At the end of this year, when I ask them, what are you? I want them to say, I'm an American. I'm as American as George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. I'm as American as Frederick Douglass. I'm one of them. Kids that play music do better in all parts of school. And that's why we have so much music in this classroom. It's fun, it's relaxing, it's challenging, and it makes them better in mathematics and reading. Okay, now, um, a couple of you guys are having a little trouble with the G7. When we go... Do you all remember G7? Because I know Amy had a little... Let me see your G7. There it is. And then your first finger should be on your first string. That's G7. The reading scores in this class are very high, and if you hear the kids ooh and ah and beg for more, that's what reading is supposed to be, a thrilling adventure. Um, these kids read very well, 
and more importantly, they keep reading. Many of the great books that we read in this classroom have to do with the struggles of being young and growing up. And the kids really relate to them because they're young and they're facing the struggle of growing up. So we read Huck Finn, we read Catcher in the Rye, we read A Separate Piece, we read Lord of the Flies, and we always read To Kill a Mockingbird, we read the autobiography of Malcolm X, we always read Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I had a lot of favorite books in Rave's class, but one of my favorites was Adventures of Huckleberry Finn because Mark Twain, he puts us in Huck's spot and he makes us choose if we should always follow the society or be ourselves. In chapter 31 in just a few minutes, it will be time for Huck finally to do the right thing and turn Jim in and make him a slave. And that is the right thing, isn't it, boys and girls? It is the right thing. Don't you think? That's what society is telling him. And then I happen to look around and see that paper. It was a close place. And I held it in my hand, and I was a-trembling. Because I got to decide forever betwixt two things, and I note it. I studied a minute, sort of holding my breath, and then says to myself, all right then, I'll go to hell, and tore it up. Danielle, will you leave Danielle? Then I set to thinking over how to get it out, it, and turned over a considerable many ways in my mind, and at last fixed a plan that suited me. It's okay. I told you, it's powerful stuff. It's real powerful stuff. So what decision did Huck make? The climax is over. He's going to be... He'll be a bad boy. He'll be a bad boy, at least according to this world he will. But what he's really going to be is he's going to be himself. He's not going to let the society tell him what to do. And isn't that a decision that all of you have to make. Society's going to tell you how to dress, what to play, what pop group to listen to, how to cut your hair. Isn't that ridiculous? Each of you is so individually special. I hope you guys make these kinds of decisions in your life. My favorite book that we read in Rafe's class is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Because it really holds the mirror up to our nature. It really shows us how we really are, how humans think. Speak a speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, tripping me on the top. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had to sleep the town crier spoke in my lines. I warrant your honor. Be not to tame neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. With this special observance, that you are studying not the modesty of nature, for anything so done is from the purpose of play, whose end at the both was and is to hold the mirror up to our nature. Go make it ready. In my fourth grade class, I would raise my hand and say, I got a question. I'm 